I found caterpillars, that was my first interest, as a schoolboy. My mother wrote a letter to my father and she said, Paul is studying a caterpillar on the kitchen table. And she described it, and I now know from that description that it had to be only one species of moth in this country, the pale tussock. I was two and three quarter years old. Many people are very sceptical of moths. Many people are very afraid of moths and have a genuine fear of them. People have this preconception that moths are small brown um, animals that just eat your woolen clothes that you have in your cupboard. People think butterflies brightly coloured, you know, moths drab and brown. It's not the case that the moths are just the drab ones. They can be um, pink, orange, so things like um, tiger moths, elephant hawk moths, um, the shark, um, so they've got very cool names and I think people are often very surprised the first time for instance that they go moth trapping that actually you get this um, such huge variety of, of different um, colours and patterns and shapes. In Britain we have about two and a half thousand species of butterflies and moths. Taking them all together, they're in a group that the scientists have labelled the Lepidoptera. It's a long word, but it's broken down into two words, Lepido and Ptera. And we know about Pterodactyls, Ptera means wing. Lepidos, it's a Greek word for a tile, like a roof tile. And a butterfly or a moth have scales on the wings, that powder that rubs off when you touch them if you hand them carelessly. And that's, that powder is the scales from the wings. And if you look at them with the microscope, they're all arranged in rows. They, they really do look like the tiles on a roof. Hence, tiled winged insects. We do get people that are upset about the sheer number of insects that are pinned. Marvellous, magnificent, rare specimens of the Philippus philippus and the Philippus philippus. Uh, we're really not pinning that many insects. We're normally pinning an individual and it will be used for science, that's the thing. It's very difficult to tell from a photograph everything you need to know about an insect. Look what Susan's taking out of that box and look what's on it. A caterpillar is a growing up stage in the life of a moth or butterfly. Traditionally, caterpillars have been kept uh, for collections and also for show um, by drying them out like a balloon. And it's quite an unusual process. They would use this amazing apparatus. So it's very, very simple. There's an oil lamp that went underneath, a little burner. And then you have this long lead here, hollow tube. And the glass end here would be inserted in the little hole at the end of the caterpillar. And then you would actually blow on the spit. Keep a very gentle, constant stream, trying to talk with it in my mouth. Um, and then you would twist it. And that way the caterpillar would be expanded and actually dry in the hot air. We don't tend to do it now because we like to keep the specimens what we call wet, which is mean we're keeping them in alcohol. To keep something wet and keep its body parts inside it is actually more important to us now than, than blowing them up. But it's a rather fun and different way of keeping something, definitely. Have you ever tried? Yeah. <laughs> I tried once and it didn't work very well for neither me or the caterpillar. <laughs> About 60% of the UK moths are actually um, specialised in broadleaf woodland or need broadleaf woodland habitats for some stage of their life cycle. So broadleaf woodlands like White and Woods are very important habitats for a lot of um, the UK's moths. What we were looking at in our research in Whiteham was how moths were affected by um, fragmentation of the woodlands. Our main finding was that woodland moths can actually move quite large distances but because they're restricted to woodland because they need woodland um, for feeding either as larvae or as adults um, that they needed these very big areas of woodland um, so they couldn't really survive in very small fragments and they also needed um, hedgerows to connect woodlands up if they were going to move across the landscape. If those plants aren't here for any reason then the species of moths will disappear. The caterpillar stage is a massive food source stage for most of our birds. 
Caterpillars are eating the plants, which allows more light to get through for other plants to compete. With the moths flying at night, they're actually one of our biggest pollinators. Moths are superb animals. They really are beautiful, beautiful creatures. So important and uh, absolutely stunning.